y'all what's up your girl g here welcome back to my channel now look i know this review is coming a little bit late i apologize but i had been on bed rest your girl has literally been dealing with some just a whole bunch of stuff i've been on bed rest having to get them go to the bathroom because the medication they gave me it was just a whole lot okay um but i was able you know to watch love after lockup and honestly this really kind of was like a filler episode and next week is going to be the finale so what there there's not like too too much but there's definitely enough that we need to talk about um about what's happening with each of these couples in particular a few um like zuri girl zuri if you keep acting crazy you're gonna push troy away um and shantae speaking of crazy don't you get no crazy ideas of wanting that, that man true false back okay so let's go ahead and get into the couples so first up kim and joey now y'all i give that man literally what kim's dad said talk about give him three months and he gonna be back on that stuff that's what it's giving not only is joey selfish he's inconsiderate he minimizes you know what kim's what kim needs and a part of why he does it is because he knows kim will stay kim has literally been around buying for this boy ever since what they she said what high school and now here it is you come back after spending all her money talking about oh i wanted to do something for myself do something for myself i've been doing all this type of stuff taking care of the kids da, 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 da. yeah that's what you signed up for a lot of the times when these men begin with the woman they're really truly not thinking about the kids because in their mind it's not their responsibility which is why i never forgot when he said on that first episode oh you know i knew kim had kids but you know that was never something i was um uh, i had to think think about you know it was never something i was thinking i would be worried about yeah you weren't worried about it because you never in your mind thought you had to pick up but you're getting with a woman with kids so they're a package deal or they should be a package deal but nonetheless <clears throat> oh sorry y'all my voice has been i don't know why today's been a little scratchy but nonetheless um kim and joey they're having their i guess engagement party and kim is like you know what i'm still pissed off about the money and everything that joey's doing but i'm not gonna bring it up because today's our party and i don't want to argue with him or nothing so joey comes in and basically they get to talking about just joking she's like you know trying to make small small talk to lighten the mood but then she brings up she was like so uh blank they blanked it out she reached out to me he was like oh word she was like yeah why did she he was like i don't know probably the same reason she did you know all them years ago and she was like really because y'all remember all them years ago she sent kim a message and you know they was going back and forth per usual as women do over some dog ass dude um so she's like why would you reach out to me he's like i mean i don't know she's like well did she send you a, a facebook request and you you see how he slowly was like yeah like he was trying to decide if he wanted to lie or not so she was like oh why didn't you say nothing to me oh i'm telling you now you know he he immediately turned something into a fight so he has a reason to drive off in that goddamn car. See, Kim, this is why you don't do everything for men. Because they, they like, oh my God, girl, Kim, you really just don't even understand what you did. He starts a fight and blows up and does this thing just so he can be able to run off and drive in that car and be gone all day. Um, But nonetheless, you know, once again, he's doing the, it ain't that big of a deal. It ain't that big of a deal, you know, stuff. And so she's like... And she even says it. She's like, oh, yes, yeah, never that big of a deal. What I'm going through, it's never a big deal, you know? And so she was like, "You, what What did she say to you? Or how did she get your number? Because he's like, she texts me. But she's like, well, damn, how would she get your number, though? And his friend gave it to her. So this friend is an enabler. Um, And then she was like, well, what happened after that? And he was like, man, she was telling me to download WhatsApp and all this type of stuff like that. And she was like, well, did you? He was like, yeah. And she's like, well, why would you do that? Like, why are you listening to her? So then she's like, let me see it. And she goes through the WhatsApp messages and showing up, them things go way back. So now she's like, you talking about you didn't tell me or like you were going to tell me. This was been going on for a hot minute. And then literally in one of the messages, it says, why would you message me while I'm with Kim? 
it's already getting lies and deception, okay? And per usual, he starts screaming. It's not that big of a deal. Runs in the car and then claims, you know, he keep calling that girl a bitch too. Like real heavy on the buh, all right? Let me go talk to this, you know? And he's like, I'm going to finally, you know, see her and put it and like end it, you know, because I'm with Kim. Okay, so he ran to the park. Um, and we'll see how that ends up, I guess, next episode. But Joey, Kim, you got to be in for the radio life if you keep trying to fight over this man like you in high school, girl. You got two kids. Stop it. Y'all, for the life of me, I kept looking for a Julian and Christine picture, but I couldn't find them nowhere. So we're just going to talk about them. Y'all know who we talking about. So Julian and Christine, y'all already know I do not Fs with Julian. I can already see what he's doing. Y'all, he is literally about to put Christine in another jail. He's always using the, oh, I'm just worried about your sobriety. Because now, now y'all see she wants to do comedy. And actually, I do think she actually would be kind of good at comedy because you know, there are people who have that awkward comedy and she gives me, I mean, I hate to say it, but she does give me like good old drunk Karen, like, re like really got, I got a little bit of jail cred on me. Like she gives that, like I drink hooch with the girls, you know, when the CEOs ain't looking like she could do that type of comedy. Like she has a story to tell. And Julian with his old fake ass over here sitting taking these interviews with these cargo shorts on. You lost your job. And then now here it is. You want y'all want to survive off your pension. And then also at the same time, like not want to go to her comedy thing. So then she asked him to go. She's like, I really would want you to go. And he's like, mm, you know, I'll think about it. She's like, it seems like you get really awkward. Like when I talk about this, like, what is it? And he was like, well, I just, you know, is it, do you think because people are not going to like me? He's like, yeah, like, you know, I just don't want you to go down this slippery slope. Like his thing is like, I don't want it to be something that triggers her. But that's the thing, Julian, like it don't know matter what you do. Like the addict is the addict. It's up to them. One and two, you, it could be anything that triggers an addict. So you, 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 you can't worry about it. So I just don't like how he's using that though. Almost as a way to control her. Because I see, I told her, like, I don't like what Julian, what he doing. Having her locked away up in the in the uh, attic like a redheaded stepchild. Um, but yeah, so um, I think she actually leaves that night. And from my uh, recollection, that's where that ends um, with them. I don't think they went anywhere else after that. Uh, Julian said he wasn't going to go. And then she just said she was upset that, you know, he didn't want to support her, but we'll see what happens next episode. Next couple. Ooh, y'all. So Shantae and True. So y'all know after they done drove five hours, um, and True sped off just so he can meet with his old little sneaky link for a goddamn Coke and a kiss. Uh, not Coke and a kiss, a coat and a kiss. Oh, Lord. <laughs> I sit here thinking about that cocaine. I just got done reading goddamn stories about Diddy. Oh, Lord, y'all, it's too much. But we'll talk about that in another video. But, yeah, so, Shantae, we, we ended the last episode with True going inside to see what his fate was going to be. Basically, we was all preparing for that nigga to go to jail. And he didn't. He's like, man, you know, this feeling right here is feeling just like... You know, I got out the first time, you know, he's like, cause I really already just prepared myself. I was already back in jail and he's like, I'm just really not trying to do that. Y'all know he's really trying to make up for basically him missing his first son's life. And so now he sees these babies with Shantae as a new opportunity and men get watch to power. see that all the time. I power the final um, sorry, y'all. I don't know if y'all heard something in the background, um, but um uh, what was I, what was I saying? Uh, true. Yeah. But for men, it's always easy to be like, oh, you know, I want to try to do this or I missed out on this. And then like them picturing, taking care of kids, they, they really don't see it as their responsibility. Like they see, yeah, helping out sometimes, but at the end of the day, we know what it is. Mama's baby, daddy's maybe. And true has already shown he gonna flee at the scene of the crime instantly, okay? Um, and so Shantae, y'all know she's doing her. I just want to give True a chance, you know. Uh, I'm just trying, trying to watch his actions. You know, do I think about getting with him? She's like, do I want to get with him? No, but do I think about it? Yeah. It's like, we knew that. We, we knew that. Shantae knows she's making the wrong decisions, 
but is going along with them just because they feel her fantasy for the moment. Like, like sharing, she's like, I want to share this with True and going into like, you know, she's, you can tell she's fantasizing this bull that True is feeding her. We all know how this goes. All that jail talk. Not to mention the family done told you, you the first black girl that he with. Like, girl, we all know this, this is literally a, a house of cards. But nonetheless, they happy, so they go out to eat. He get in the car and his friend, Kels, called. And Kels is the girl that is with his his bro. Like, homie, they dot, you know, his ace boom coon. Okay? And so, and you know, Shantae's mind, she's like, you know, I would never think anything of Kels. Cause you know, that's his, his brother's girl. And I was like, you would think that Shantae, you would think that these niggas got no code. And I mean, no code. Okay. But for this instance, we going to give them the, the shadow of doubt, but nonetheless, you know, Kales and True over there reminiscing on oh my guy when we met when we were 13, key, key, key. And you can tell Shantae's just kind of like annoyed. So they get into the parole part. So um, Kells is good friends with Pepper, who Troy, not Troy, who True is gonna, um, parole with. And so every time I hear the name Pepper, I'm either picturing the way that Kells look is giving, uh, like, either older, white, auntie kind of cool, you know, was hood adjacent. Cause Pepper, like, it, 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 you know, but still real feminine, kind of auntie. Or straight up butch like Pepper. Like we, you know, we call her Pepper. You know, like, or giving just straight, like, kind of like stud, but still keep the titties pushed up energy, you know? <laughs> like she got the buzz cut and she still wear boxers, but the titties are still poking out. You get what I'm saying? <laughs> so, um, yeah. So we're going to find out who Pepper is uh, next episode. But then, you know, True reveals that he got parole to that house. And he's like, yeah, you know, Shantae, um, I knew her coming down here because it killed me too. Cause Shantae was like, I don't know why he didn't parole to my house. Why was that even a thought in your mind, Shantae? Really? This man literally just told you the other day that he's still talking to other females, that he was talking to other females when y'all weren't together. So, you know, he is not going to give that up. And nine times out of 10, we know how these prison dudes do. They get out, they've been talking to this girl, whatever. They want a spot where they can get have uh the least amount obviously we know true doesn't like rules or he wouldn't be in the situation in the first place so yeah let's we we know he needs lackadaisical and not gonna be on his behind and shante he also want something okay and he can't do that with you and the kids around the house sorry um but yeah so we gonna meet um peppa next episode but now he tells shante so she's like, what does that mean? Cause he, cause he was like, so you, and she's like, wait a minute. She's like, why are you starting? So you like, as in me, he's like, yeah. Cause you're going to come down here. And she's like, what? And he's like, you're going to come down here. She's like, that's five hours. True. And, and he's like, and even in his confession, he's like, yeah, I know. But Shantae would be me, been with me down with me. And I just know she's going to do it. And it's like, he does stuff because he knows you're going to do it. He, that's why he threw that parole shit in your lap last minute. And here you are. Like, if he really wanted to show that he was going to be there for them kids, he would have paroled at your house. But also, like, not because you not really want him involved. But here here it is. We're going to see how this mess plays out because Shantae wants to live in La La Land. So let's go ahead and go to the next couple. Y'all, firstly, I want to apologize because I really have looked. But I just realized in my last two reviews, I completely missed Arthur and Hope. And I just, I don't know, maybe just because I'm trying to like get through the reviews. I don't know what it is, but, and I really like Arthur. I really do. So I'm just so mad at myself that I really can't believe. I don't even know how I forgot him and the pink hair. But y'all, nonetheless, um, this episode, we finally get Hope to introduce her, you know, her family to Arthur. She meets with her sisters and, you know, she's trying to slowly ease on in who she's talking to. And they're like, girl, spit it out. And she's, and they're like, is this like a spin the block or is it somebody new? And she's like, you know, it's kind of, and they're like, what's his name? And she's like, Arthur. And one of them is like, mm, yeah, her brain sitting there thinking, computing. She's like, Arthur, that name sounds familiar. Arthur, as in jail, Arthur. And she's like, yep, that's him. And so she's like, wow. And so now Hope basically has to tell them. All his story, basically how he got out, 
And then he went right back in and she's like, just as most convicts do, you know, reoccurring because the system. And she's like, yeah, okay, all that. But like, was it because the same thing? What was it? Um, and so the sisters are like, so what has he been doing since he's out? And she's like, well, he's only been out for like two months. So, you know, I'm trying to give him, you know, space to, to like grow and, you know, work his things out because he did have a little bit of a, you know, mental break, uh, breakdown. And so like, I'm just trying to support him through that. And, you know, for the sisters, they took it, um, in stride, I guess, you know, but they really wanted to just kind of get to the meat and potatoes of like, okay, if that is what he's dealing with, then how do you expect, you know, for your needs to get met and for, you know, for your life to move forward, especially as you're the breadwinner. And um, she's like, you know, he's doing things or whatever. You know, he has applied to a few jobs. And obviously, Arthur, with his history, is literally going to struggle getting jobs. So that's only going to make him more depressed. But he should put that into his his clothes because he does have an outlet. Hope did support him in, you know, buying that machine for him and things like that. But it's very clear he has social anxiety. He deals with depression. Obviously, like, you know, I'm not going to say hallucinations. But something they're close up because this man is, you know, talking about he sees demons and things like that. And so, you know, his mental space is not one of somebody who should be in a relationship. But that's going to be on Hope and Arthur to figure that out. Um, but yeah, so they then go meet her pops, I think it was her granddad and grandma. And so he come in, sat down. I really want to know what they thought about that goddamn coloring book triangle that was on his forehead I really want to know what they said when they got in the car and was like did you see that kind of thing triangle on the nigga head like <laughs> on the front of his goddamn forehead and you want a job like a J-O-B come on but um yeah so like Arthur you really are gonna have to get an unconventional job but um yeah so he's asking questions and of course Arthur's answer him like yeah you know I, I just got out you know I did go back for I think he said it was like aggravated robbery or something like that um and he's like but now like I'm really just trying to do my best after you know my mental situation to just get back up and you know be there for hope and I really do love what the sister said y'all in this moment because she said she actually studies criminal justice reform and Hope's granddad was a CO. So in his mind, he's like, yeah, I know all this, you know, jail talk, you know. So I, I it's going to be the proof is in the pudding. And the sister was like, you know, I, I study how the system works. Like, you know, this is going to have to be something that you do for you, not just Hope, but for you. And I really do appreciate that that's kind of how she took that direction. Because truly, that is how it's going to be. Like, before you even tackle one thing in a relationship, you really have to tackle yourself. And I know Arthur felt like he said hope. He's like, you know, I was kind of looking for hope to just kind of like stand up for me, you know, because when it's uh, me and my family, you know, I always stand up for her. And you know what? I did see that aspect of, you know, he did stand up to his mom about hope. But here's the difference, Arthur. Hope agrees with what they're saying. And what they're saying also is very much true and valid. And I know you wanted her to kind of like soften the blow for you, but you're going to need to kick up your ass if you want to get motivated to, you know, take care of Hope. And she's a driver, so, you know, she make munions. And you, like the sister said, you got to do it yourself, you know, do the work. And now that you've met the family, they going to be on your ass cakes. So you really have no more room. So I hope, I really do hope Arthur gets it together and I I wish the best for him and hope, but I think we all see where this is going. All right, y'all. So after uh, Zuri had her whole, speaking of mental meltdown, Zuri had her, her formal one this episode. She didn't let the titties out, threw the bra out. So the, the, the mic wasn't in the room with her and literally all you hear is screaming, of you know why does your baby mother you know know about this yes I cheated on you but we worked through that I, I I'm starting to feel like that was something that maybe her parents didn't know because her reaction and especially with her 
you know, her family is a church family, you know, she's pastor's daughter. So I'm sure that's not something that was told to them. So, cause I'm sitting in my mind thinking like, why the, is that such a big reaction? I mean, on top of the fact that it is coming from his baby mother, but I, I just started thinking like that. Y'all drop down in the comments. Is that something that's a fair realization that I came to that y'all think that could be another reason why she blew up like that? But I do appreciate that Troy is a mediator and he don't be adding to the bullshit, which is almost what makes Zuri fight more. You can tell she almost fights to like she she's toxic short long story short she's toxic <laughs> i was trying to find a long way to put it but long story short zuri's toxic she like that fighting shit and so you could tell that's her mo um and so troy was scared he was like you know i knew you know zuri had some ways but you know this is my first time seeing in person like you know this side of her this is a lot and karen in the background you see she just her I swear Karen has been comedic relief you see her peeking in the background her looking and <laughs> how she roll her eyes look down the glasses and she be like child girl and she say something stupid I enjoy Karen surprisingly but he finally gets her to calm down he puts the ring back on her because he's like look she's like your baby mother fix it I shouldn't be feeling this way and so he puts the ring back on because she's like, if I take this bitch off, it's over. Uh, uh, if I take it off again, that's it. Um, and I really, it's like, Troy's like, I'm really still trying to figure out what I did. <laughs> and I don't think, I really don't think Troy um, expected Yana to say that shit. Like, or for like, I don't think Troy had anything to do that. I fully think Yana took that upon herself when she was talking with Karen. And Karen, oh, Missy yes, ass, because you know, she, you know, she giving... 227 real good just sit there just talking um and so um yeah just giving aunt jack a to the fullest spilling the tea um and so they finally get ready uh to go meet the you know the his daughter and i really am excited for troy to meet his daughter you can tell he really wants to be involved and zuri i think also too now you come to your senses of you know i need to go with him because i'm not gonna allow you know yana to feel like anything's up with us and I'm like oh I, what, I was yelling it through the screen like girl when Yana sees this she's literally going to laugh herself because this is the exact reaction if she did do that for that reaction like you gave her what she wanted so she goes down there like they all drive of course Karen says she took her two gummies so they on the way down there to Buffalo his daughter calls and you know you can tell he just wants to get to her so fast um and so when they finally get there you know family is hugging kissing mwah, mwah, mwah. and you know Zuri's just kind of in the background now she ended up talking to one of his family members I couldn't quite remember see who it was I couldn't tell if it was like a sister-in-law an aunt um or something like that a, a cousin or something that um uh was talking to Zuri so y'all drop down in the comments let me know but you know, she did say something fair, essentially that what we all know, like it's when you're out, you want to be around family, you want the support and next to, you know, when Troy's with Zuri, he doesn't have any of that. Not to mention, he's not going to be able to go, you know, to his daughter anytime he wants and things like that. And he wants to be involved. And so I don't know how far Buffalo is from her house, but you know, that is going to be something that they're going to have to work through. And so at this moment, you know, of course, Zuri's on her piece of cues just waiting she's like i'm just waiting for that bitch to walk in <laughs> yes Zuri is ready okay i wonder what um y'all look like because i do think Zuri has some insecurities i i have picked up and noticed that y'all she be beating the f out her face when i tell you i be thinking Zuri's gonna give herself a concussion the way how hard she be hitting, hitting her cheekbones but y'all tell me what y'all think about Zuri and troy do y'all feel like troy is playing uh you know triangulation between the two or is he one of those dudes where it's like I think I know what it is Troy just wants to see his daughter so he gonna talk to the baby mom because essentially like I gotta talk to her to get to my daughter and so I feel like he just appeases the baby mama because he really appreciates her you know for raising his child and so to have a man like that I think is cool so Zuri you got to work on the way okay Last but not least, y'all, Bianca and Daniel. 
um basically for them bianca is getting ready to you know get you know see daniel for his release she's super happy and basically just talking about everything you know uh while she's getting dressed and she's like oh you know i don't want it to be too revealing you know people tell me you know don't be too revealing but like like I, why, why would i not do that like i want him to want to like have sex with me like you know like uh like this girl and i mean this in the most disrespectful respectful way but really disrespectful when she talks sometimes i really just i really just re just want to slap the shit out of her because like i like when people say something to her it's literally almost like as if she's not understanding it's not computing how her actions are affecting other people every time she's asked hey you're gonna drink around him yeah i'm gonna drink around him is like it's like it's not my problem like it's not computing it's not computing i don't know what's not i and then i always have to remind myself she's 23 this heifer ain't got still ain't got her whole frontal lobe like it i finally remembered i'm like why is this not clicking to this girl about how what you do is going to affect your partner and then i remembered she's 23 y'all she literally is missing her whole forehead brain matter so this is beyond fitting but, you know, I'm glad Daniel's friend, like, you know, he is being a good friend of just calling out Bianca and her delusion. She's delusional in a way that we haven't seen before where she's just like, everything is to be good. Like, and he's like, well, did you think about y'all living together and what was that was going to entail? She's like, well, no, not really. And so he's just kind of like, what? Like, what the heck? Like, you're not worried about nothing. And she's like, no, like, why would we? Like, we love each other. Like, I, like, I know everything's going to go okay and he's she's like as long as i don't drink around him right and the friend is like literally looking at this girl like this dumb bitch like she does not get it like yeah you're not drinking him but he's like she's like i think he can handle it like i know him i feel like he'll be okay and it's like no you actually really don't his friends and his family know him and they're letting you know he's an addict and the fact that the friend knew that he relapsed in jail and bianca is trying to like sweep it under the rug like it didn't happen like oh you know yeah he relapsed in jail but like he didn't wake up and like you know thinking he was gonna do it you know it was just something that like happened exactly what do you mean like oh he didn't wake up you know just saying oh i'm gonna you know relapse today no addict does that's how it is it wasn't just like oh like you know and that day he just chose to do it girl like i like i read the only definition of explain how i feel is really like i just want to slap the shit out of her because she's so selfish but at the end of the episode you see all the family waiting they all waiting on daniel i mean on bianca and so bianca they get there and they wait outside and her and daniel have a little tussling match one more again because she's like fiance because i guess bianca knows um one of the daniel's friends or something like that the girl that was standing right there or that was the sister and she's like fiance and he's like what and the friend was like daniel didn't propose and she was like well she doesn't have to like she's almost there she's like yeah like i'm almost there like let it happen like she basically was kind of like let it happen and it's just like you could tell the friend is so over bianca and as he said at the end of the episode he's like i'm not wishing on downfall but i just I, I just know what I'm expecting. When I get those calls, I'll know. And that's where the episode ends. So y'all tell me what you think about Love After Lockup, where you think, think, think these couples are going and how the finale is going to end. Appreciate y'all for tuning in. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter and I will catch y'all later.